Hello class, hello YouTube. I'm Trader Rick from Swing Trade from Scratch where I focus on bringing you all things swing trading education online. Welcome to this week's outlook and recap video for swing trading. In the video, I'm gonna recap the previous week in the stock market. The stock market ended its winning streak, but I started my winning streak, hopefully. So I'll talk to you about the main events that occurred and emphasize the stocks that I've had open for swing trading and the ones that I've closed out. So I closed out Mr. Cooper for a small gain, Nvidia for a bigger gain, and then I have two ongoing positions with Micron Technology. I've had that open for two weeks now. And I recently just opened this week Amazon.com. So I'll show you what's going on with all of those stocks and then give you my outlook for the next week in the stock market in the coming weeks as well by talking to you about my trading plan around advanced micro devices. That's AMD. I'll show you what I'm looking for there and how I plan on using that stock to trade around one of the main events coming up next week, the CPI report. So I'll talk to you about what I think we're gonna see out of CPI, a surprise that I think might occur and how I wanna trade AMD based on that event. And speaking of winning, if you want to start winning on your own, you have to check out my swing trading courses that are designed to make you a better independent professional swing trader. And you can preview the first lessons of each set of courses for free. So you can check that out at the link in the video description. And with that, let's move into looking at those individual stock charts. Let us begin with the outlook this time since we had a pretty uneventful week especially compared to recent ones and the main event yes we're going with main event again the main event is the cpi report this week so that's the next important inflation data point that we are going to hear for the previous month also this week we have retail sales housing starts and another inflation data point, the producer price index. But what I'm thinking for, thinking about for the CPI report is that we may see a rise, which would break the trend of a series of reports showing that inflation has been cooling off. I think there's been three CPI reports in a row that have all come down and that is largely responsible for the recent gains that stocks have made. Now this time I think we may see a rise and that is because of an increase in gasoline prices for the month of January, which for some reason nobody was really talking about but I certainly noticed uh, filling up and then looking at the statistics to confirm that and also the price of used cars has uh, crept back up as well. So here's what we're looking at for CPI, the estimate or expectation there. I think there's two different ways that this could play out, and I want to use AMD to trade either scenario. The most likely scenario that I think is that CPI rises month over month, and it is important to use the month over month statistic rather than the year over year since those base effects are already baked in there and the Fed will be mostly paying attention to the month over month statistic. So if it comes in higher and higher than expected, I think that'll be a good chance to short AMD. $78 is the key level that I am anticipating being the most likely relevant level to trade this report that comes out on Tuesday the 14th. If it breaks down or if it's trading below that, uh, rejects 78 after that higher CPI report, then I want to get in short near 78 with price targets down to 73, 69, 30, 67, 15, and potentially all the way down to 62, 75 if that more aggressive Fed has to take hold in the wake of some statistics or economic data that's showing that inflation is a little bit more sticky than a lot of people have been anticipating. Another point that I wanted to mention, and I'll probably hit on it again in the recap, is that that Fed funds futures market is now at a 78% 
chance of another 25 basis point rate hike, rate hike for the month of May. That's up 17% this week and up more than 45% since last Thursday, the day before the January employment report. Now, I do want to be prepared in case I'm totally wrong and CPI comes in cooler and does fit the form of a series of reports showing inflation cooling, making it the fourth so report that suggests that inflation is coming down. And if it does come in there, then cooler than expected, I want a long bounce off of 78 or a reclaim of 78 that could be possible as well. And then I want to get in long up to 84.60 and 89 just to take profit there at some of the levels from the last week or two and then hold out hopes for uh, potentially 94.50 a resistance from a little bit higher up near September or August of last year. So uh, leaning bearish on this one, but want to be prepared to trade either scenario there. And yes, it is another chip stock that I've been relying on lately. Uh, I'm going to talk about two other chips. So I'm feeling like Todd Bowles. I don't know if you saw this story. Todd Bowles celebrated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers win of their division with a package of Chips Ahoy cookies and a glass of milk, which I thought was quite comical. So that's AMD. And then I'll talk about the key events of last week in the recap portion. Now, Tuesday we heard from Chairman Powell once again, uh, some Fed speak there. He had a calm reaction to that jobs report that was quite surprising to the number of jobs created, about 300,000 more than expected on average, up above 500,000 jobs created in the month of January. And he did, of course, tell us that the Fed will be data dependent and will hike more if necessary. So we did see some selling this week. I mentioned the market giving up that winning streak. The S&P was down by 1.1%. And the NASDAQ 100 was down by 2.4%. Uh, Thursday, we heard earnings out of Disney. They were better than expected. Claims were under 200,000. And that initially led to a bid to start the day. Selling pressure did take over on Thursday, closing the day out with a pretty big red candle there. And then Friday, despite the uh, green candle on the S&P, and the slightly green wiki candle on the NASDAQ. Saw some more selling or really sideways action that day. This was off of the back of some economic data that University of Michigan consumer sentiment, the inflation expectations basically, this rose by a couple of percentage points for February. And then as I mentioned, looking at that Fed funds futures market, now a 78% chance of an additional 25 basis point rate, rate hike for May. I said it wrong both times. All right, let's look at the individual stocks then. I uh, shouldn't have jumped to AMD there, my bad. We're looking at Mr. Cooper here. Uh, entered this one on the 24th. It was a technical play once it rejected uh, resistance at 45.50. I thought that a Fed that was going to have to be higher for longer, and it looks like that's going to be true now with the increased likelihood of that May basis, uh, May 25 basis point rate hike looking more likely that the Fed is going to have to be higher for longer than the market had been anticipating. But it didn't really matter on this trade. Unfortunately, I ran out of time with uh, it's a movie reference, by the way, as Phil Sims once said covering the NFL as a broadcaster for CBS. I miss Phil Sims. His mistakes were quite interesting and humorous over the years, uh, but ran out of time here. Exited with the earnings coming up on the, t on the 10th. I exited on the 9th at 44.72 for a gain of 49 cents per share. So that was actually a pretty good intraday read on the home builder here, getting out uh, closer to the middle of this sell-off. Uh, not perfect, but better than selling above entry level. So that was a small gain there of just 49 cents per share. 
and a return on investment of a whopping one tenth of one percent. If you are curious, the company did miss their revenue estimates and it did sell off early, uh, hitting both 43.60 and 43.14, two of the price targets that I had in mind before getting bought up in a strange move uh, as the stock gained 4.3% on the day. And then NVIDIA, this was a nice, hopefully start to a winning streak on my part here. Let's just zoom it on in and move this on over and that as well. NVIDIA was an event driven play with that more dovish FOMC and tone of Chairman Powell at that press conference. I longed the bounce that afternoon on February 1st above 200 at $200.60 and then took profit the next day, $212 for a gain of 1140 per share. And then I hit my price target this time just in time and there's your little um, business inventory lesson there up on the screen for you this week. Exited just in time on the 8th at 225.34 for a gain of 25.28 per share. So close the trade out there for a net gain of 18.34 a share return on investment of 9.1%. So I finally got my first win of the quarter and I'll take a shot at the Houston Texans there who deserve a shot for getting rid of Coach Lovey Smith after having not too bad of a season with the limited talent that he was given. So then you see NVIDIA selling off and even gapping down on Friday to close the week out lower. So got out just in time. I'm going to stop saying that. And then ongoing Micron Technology went in long same thing for the dovish fomc event at 62.13 as 62 was reclaimed that day and then i've got those price targets higher those green lines there stop loss at 58.50 unfortunately it is trading below 62 pretty much all week and moved lower on friday so not looking too good here on Micron technology, but I'm gonna hold it open long in case uh, CPI ends up being in line with that cooling disinflationary narrative, and that could send stocks higher. In that case, I'll be happy to be long on Micron technology, but like I mentioned, do have my stop around 58.50. And then a new trade I entered this week was Amazon.com. I got short on the 7th with some of that selling that day as 101.50 broke down. This was a reliable key level from earlier in the year that I used to trade Amazon successfully. So got short there on the 7th. Three days later, took profit on the selling that we saw on Friday the 10th. Locked some in 50% there at 96.64. This was a gain of $4.08 per share got the final price target there at 92 stop loss up around 106 so this short mixed with the micron long keeps me hedged in case the market moves either way but it does seem like we are going to get some pullback after those recent gains that we've seen pretty much across the board in equities as some more realistic assessment of what the Fed is going to have to do and where stocks should be based on what they're talking about in these earnings reports and outlooks. So just to reiterate, AMD, if we get that higher than expected uh, rise on the CPI report for the previous month, I want to get in short around 78 if that breaks down or rejects if we're trading lower than it if we're trading around 84 89 and that is the case those are even better levels for me to get in short and i am prepared on the flip side as well so thank you for watching thank you for supporting if you want to get my written thoughts and written trading plans you can subscribe to my email weekly watch list and newsletter for sharing to swing trading that is completely free and the information to get you to this sign up page is in the video description. All right, I hope everybody enjoys the, yeah, I'm going to call it the big game. 
Regardless, if you're rooting for the Eagles or the Chiefs, it should be a great game. I think I'm going to go with the Eagles only because they have 22 out of 22 starters to start the year healthy and active and ready to play in this game. But I think it's going to be a good, close, competitive game. But I think the Eagles pull it out. All right, everybody. Talk to you next week with all eyes on CPI during the week. Trader Rick signing off so long.